democracy. Of course, democracy as a political system, I think, it has its origin in ancient Greece, particularly in Athens, uh, where some of the citizens uh, could, uh, could vote on political decisions. Uh, democracy is the idea that we vote on stuff, that the majority dictates the outcome. Kiro, thank you. I'm not sure how much money that is, but it's got that kind of a color that suggests it's, it's a not in a significant amount. So thank you. He writes, Richard Wolf is a six-man excellent debate you're on. Thank you. Um, democracy is the idea that the majority rules. The majority's decisions as voted on are what should guide political or other decisions. It is the elevation of the majority as the unit of decision making, of the unit um, of, uh, what do you call it, uh, um, power. It has no respect for individual rights, it has no respect for the individual Whatever the majority decides, the majority decides. And it's interesting that people on the left love democracy on economic issues. They want a democracy in the corporation. They want democracy in politics. They want a, 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 as, as broad a democracy as possible in politics. Over economic issues only. But the fact is that when it comes to, let's say, issues that they're passionate about, abortion, some of them free speech, they're not interested. They don't want democracy to determine whether a woman can get an abortion or not. Some were there, on their issues, they become, quote, principled. Right. So, it is curious because even they instinctually understand that democracy doesn't guarantee truth, that this democracy doesn't guarantee justice, that the democracy doesn't guarantee good decisions. On the contrary, the majority is usually wrong on important issues. The challenge with democracy is that most people don't understand what it actually means. Most people think what we have in America is a democracy, and what we have in Europe and other relatively free countries is democracy, and therefore they associate, they associate um, freedom with democracy. And, and, and uh, you know, Richard Wolff has done this. He didn't do it so much in my debate, but I've seen him do it in the past. I'm like, what, are you against democracy? Do you want to go back to feudalism or whatever? Yes, I'm against democracy to the extent that democracy represents majority rule in pretty much anything. What we have in most Western countries is what you'd call limited democracy, limited by a constitution in the United States, limited by tradition and, and certain uh, uh, other restrictions that exist whether constitutional or otherwise, within European countries and other relatively free countries. A court that upholds rights even when they're not listed in a constitution, like in Israel, for example. Kind of a sense of a basic law. And that's what people think democracy is, and that's why I don't come out and say democracy is evil, democracy is bad, because it's not what people think absolute majority rule is the rule of the mob. It's the rule of any 51%, and then they can do anything to the minority. And the minority could be 10%, 40%. It could be one, just one individual. America was founded to protect us. It was founded as a free country. And one of the things it was founded to protect us from was democracy. The founders were very clear on this. They, they, they knew of the evils of historic democracies. They knew how democracies collapsed. 
So they limited voting, the expression of democracy, the people's expression of a majority, to choosing particular political leaders, the House members, House of Representatives, the president, but even there, some limitation was placed on majority rule, and that's why we don't choose a president based just purely on majority rule. We still vote. We still have, it's so representative. It's still true that within a particular state, it's democratically chosen, but a president is not a full majority rule democratic choice. What makes America unique, what makes it, has made it in the past at least, particularly free, is the fact that it wasn't very democratic, is the fact that it resisted democracy. One of the great evils today is that it's becoming more democratic, partially by electing senators directly and partially by the fact that the Supreme Court will not throw out things that are clearly unconstitutional if they believe the people will it. And these are often conservatives. Um, you know, uh, Justice Scalia, who is revered by the right, who is loved by conservatives, did not believe in individual rights. He has a number of statements where he indicate that he thinks individual rights are, in Bentham's words, nonsense on stilts. And he was an advocate of some level of democracy. In spite of being an originalist, he always took into account in his rulings, and that's why he, he supported a lot of very, very bad rulings, the will of the people, the will of the majority. So uh, it's, uh, so you have to be careful with democracy. We're against unlimited democracy. And America is not a democracy. America is a republic a constitutional republic in which we have a constitution and a bill of rights to shrink the scope of democracy, to shrink the impact of democracy, to shrink the power of democracy, to make it so our politicians have very little power. So what we vote on does not affect every aspect of our lives. Now that has all gone out the window, sadly. That has all gone out the window, sadly, as America has abandoned it's, um, it's, uh, it's democracy. Uh, sorry, it's constitutional status and embraced democracy, become more democratic. All right, I just want to throw that in there. You know, democracy is not that good for politics. The idea of democracy in the workplace is ludicrous for a lot of reasons, that, that being among them, but it, it, it's never been true. The truth uh, w was, was the standard by which majorities functioned, right? The majority thought that was a flat, the majority thought, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. Once somebody discovered it's round, reality, it's round, the majority, what matters is truth. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brook Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening, you get value from watching, Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Yaron Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.